Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Demon Souls, the game where we start to peel back the layers of Boletaria and the uh, surrounding, well, the remaining kingdoms, I should say, because most of these are just burnt to shit and they can be accessed in any other way than through these archstones in the nexus here. I'm um, right next to patches because I still have a, a bit of souls left and I should well, probably check long out right. what he wants to so tell me. Price, eh? Okay, there's no difference in his dialogue now, is there? Well, I have news for them. Praying never put food in my mouth, nor anyone else's. So that doesn't seem to be any different than before, but let's see what we can buy from him, because more, most importantly, he actually sells healing items, and I need some of those, because, uh, yeah. I've, uh, I've lost quite a few from that previous level. Uh, there's not much else that he sells, so I'm just gonna buy a bunch of these late moon grasses so let's just buy nine of those uh, that actually puts me to the weight limit so i'm gonna have to uh swap around a few things so aside from draining our soul supply i actually also want to talk to a few people here because i think some of them might actually have new dialogue now you have you seen my corporeal flesh has my body gone rotten uh i actually don't know where his corpse is supposed to I'm be sorry Please leave me alone. Okay, so in most games, the Crestfallen Warrior actually loses his mind at a certain point. Ah, who are you? I don't remember anything. And this seems to be the case with this guy here as well, because he's slowly starting to forget ah, everybody. Who are you? There we go. Um, but, of course, last time we also saved a character, and I actually want to have a little chat with that guy um he doesn't seem to be over here because that is the magic side of the nexus and we're gonna have to go to the miracle side of the nexus and there we go saint urbane is back but oh was the disciple of gold that we found right next to patches the guy that was over here was that supposed to be the same guy yeah because then we found this corpse uh hi saint saint urbane thanks to you i was able to seek refuge in this nexus now I stay here and pray, along with my disciples, for the heroes facing the demons. If you wish for benevolent protection in your fight against the demons, then bring me demon souls. I will cleanse them and create miracles with their power. So basically, Saint Urbane can create um, the best miracles in the game from some of the demon souls that we've been uh, collecting. But uh, <laughs> I still notice that he still hasn't introduced himself, which is ridiculous. You are a very rude person. Ah, Astraea of the Valley of Defilement. The last I heard, Saint Astraea of the West was accompanied by the knight Garl Vinland. She would never be corrupted by souls. Not under the protection of such a renowned knight in his charmed armor. Surely it is mere slander. Sadly, the weak are prone to such backstabbing. So there we go, that's the second time we've heard mentioned of Saint Astraea, who uh, is, well, they, they claim that she's been taken over by a demon, but she's protected by a, a glorious knight, so that definitely couldn't be the case, right? Vito, the Moonlight Knight, Resire of Isterel, even Selen Vinland. Many honorable knights have ventured into Boletaria in search of the Valley of Defilement. The vicious rumors about Estria offend our most basic sense of respect for God's name. However, none of these great knights have made it back. Could it be that that wretched valley is so infested with grime that even our Lord's voice does not resonate there? Or perhaps it is the fate of those left behind by God. So there we go, another tidbit about the Valley of Defilement, and uh, a lot of very famous knights have gone there, but uh, none of them have returned so far. So we might learn a bit more about them once we get further into the Valley of Defilement ourselves. If you truly are a disciple, then you must have a talisman in God's image. Heavenly miracles occur in Boletaria through the talismans. God has granted this accursed land a special power. It is God's way of telling us we must stand against the demons. 
So this is actually interesting. So he mentions that it is God that has bestowed them with those powers. But we know that miracles are also stemming from the soul art. So uh, aside from uh, magic, miracles are just another side of the same coin. Um, which means that the miracles and gold that he is referring to is actually the old one. So, uh, yeah, kind of a mis misguided fate there, I think. After the dark arts spread across the land, holy miracles were witnessed once again. Tying that up again. The will of God is clear. We must defeat the demons, annul the curse of Boletaria, and purge the magicians who manipulate those accursed souls. So there we go, more uh, more backstory from St. Urbain. I think that might have been the last one. As you know, souls are a source of wicked power, emanating from the demons. King Alant was overcome by lust for such power, and has placed Boletaria in her present predicament. Old Freak and the Candle Maiden are no exception. So we've heard talk about Freik as well, which is probably the uh, powerful magic user of this world. And of course the Candle Lady is the uh, Maiden in Black. We must defeat the demons, annul the curse of Boletaria, and purge the magicians who manipulate those accursed souls. So another side of the same coin, but again, um, they feel like they are the better, as I think the other side, if we uh, ever get a chance to talk to them as well, uh, will uh, tell us the same thing, that miracles are the bad thing. So uh, let's see what we can actually learn from St. Urbane. Um, so we get a few miracles here that are based on demon souls. So, hmm. So we can get second chance, which is a miracle if you cast it beforehand and you die, you actually automatically resurrect which is cool. So we can actually um, read about the bosses here as well. So Miracle derived from the soul of the old hero demon prevents the caster's death one time. This miracle is a symbolic denunciation of the heretical tradition, I suppose, that worships death and the dead, which is of course where we found the uh, old hero. The regeneration derived from the soul of the adjudicated demon gradually restores the caster's HP. This miracle is a symbolic denunciation of the heretical human devouring adjudicator. I actually think, yeah, I don't have that anymore because I made the meat cleaver with that. Uh, then we also have the riding a demon soul, so cures status ailments. Uh, miracle derived from the soul of the leechmonger demon. The miracle is anath an is an anathema. To the miasma and disease that gurgle at the defiled base of the valley. So that's basically what the miracles always try to do. They try to be the opposite of what the demon represented. So the um, the leechmonger was uh, a was just found in a place full of poison and decay. So what you're getting from the miracle is a way to cure that. Then regeneration is from the adjudicator demon, which was basically just bleeding from that meat cleaver in his side and then second chance is resurrection which is basically coming from a place of death so the other way around and then gold's wrath derived from the soul of the dragon gold demon creates an explosive field of force with the caster at its center one of the greatest of all miracles it symbolizes the power of gold in opposition to the forces of evil and is an offer of aid to all who are moral and righteous and uh, the other two are ones that we could already buy from the Disciple of Gold. So I think I'm going to actually buy Gold's Wrath. Because uh, I don't think I need the Dragon's Demon Soul for anything else so far. So there we go. Let's buy that. I'm not sure if I can actually uh, cast that. I think I already have. Although it can't really hurt to actually have Cure as well available. So there we go. Um, and actually she should be attuning... I could attune Cure. Cure uh, is only like spending 10 more magic points compared to Antidote. Uh, which is probably for the best. So let's unattune this and then attune Cure. So now we can use Cure and Heal. So that was Saint Urbane. I don't know if she actually has anything new to say now. Thank goodness. The Lord has not forgotten me yet. For he has allowed me into the presence of Saint Urbane. I shall serve him and pray with him, and thus express my faith in God, Mbasa.
Mbasa indeed. So yeah, she uh, recognizes the presence of Saint Urbain now. I plan to bequeath all my possessions to Saint Urbain. My grandfather's articles may contain more miracle stone shards like the one he gave me, but they'd only be wasted in my hands. Saint Urbain can hear the voice of God through them. So that actually begs the question. Um, we know Saint Urbain isn't really a nice person because he didn't even introduce himself, the asshole. Um, but this bit of conversation makes me think that he might also be a charlatan, like a fraud, because she wants to give him the entire bag of uh, gemstones that she has over there. Saint Urbain can hear the voice of God through. And yeah, she just believes that Saint Urbain will be able to do better things with that but as you can see even his little altar over here is filled with gemstones so yeah that doesn't seem like a focus of a, a holy man now does it does this guy have anything else to say my you have rescued his augustus i did i express my deepest gratitude you have relieved me of a great illness oh thank god umbasa umbasa indeed do i get a reward no I don't feel like I got a reward from anybody for this. Do you have any connection to Patches the Hyena? I trust not. He is a depraved, vile man, and he deserves no allies. I hope that an upstanding hero such as yourself is selective when making associations. By the way, I highly recommend the companionship of the jovial Saint Urbain. Yeah, I mean, Saint Urbain sounds as sketchy as patches at this point. Have you heard the rumors about Astraea of the Valley of Defilement? They claim that she and her loyal knight have become demons and lead a clan of degenerate miscreants. In truth, the rumors are surely unfounded. There are all sorts of wrongdoers down there who would think up such nonsense. Yet, if the rumors are true, then may she be eternally damned for her debasement of the Lord's name. So there we go. Somebody else who's not happy about what's happening to Astraea, or at least the rumors surrounding her. And that's about it from this guy. He doesn't seem to have anything more useful to say than that. Which means that we are about ready to head into the next area. Um, before that, of course, as you remember, I need to kill myself. Because this game is really peculiar like that. I could actually try and get the uh, the item over here now, now that I'm here. Uh, and I want to kill myself anyway. Nope, seems like I'm going to kill myself. There we go. Splat. And then we can head into our next world. Well, well yeah, part, part of the world. But we're going to go back where we came from, actually. We're going to go back into world four and wrap that up completely so uh shrine of storms for the final time and we're gonna go to the altar of storms so uh the hero's remains were cleansed with bright water and offered to the storm king the storm king is a beacon for countless storm beasts whose broad wings blacken the sky so the manta rays so uh, there might actually be some uh, vengeance for me for all the uh, crystal shards i got up my ass from those manta rays before in this uh, final level, because similar to how the Dragon Gold was the uh, final boss of uh, Stone Fang Tunnel and was quickly, well, was just go coming in right after the boss before that, so the Flame Lurker, this is basically the same thing. Because this is the King Manta Ray, or the, the Storm King, as he's better known. But of course, this thing flies, and we don't really have anything against that. But look at that. You can see the scale now because of the, the normal storm beast on his back. But this guy, this thing is huge. Yep. So we're gonna have to try and kill that. Um, I'm gonna keep the shield up because there's no real use for my weapon at the moment. Um, and as you can see, He's right there at the top, and the uh, little ones are right over here. So I'm just gonna keep the shield up. As long as I have the shield up, everything should be a okay. And the noise these things make is actually really cool. The sound design of these creatures is uh, really, really cool. So this thing, there we go, that's still. 
I'm gonna try and wall a little bit. But, as you can see, this is a wide open area just filled with one of those storm beasts. And as long as I wall around, that's fine. But as you can see, this coming up on a bright open area. Jesus Christ. It's like it's raining crystal shards. So I'm gonna just go back and forth a little bit. I'm gonna ignore the crystal lizards for now. Because there is an item over here, and we're actually going to grab this thing. So I'm going to have to see... Are there any uh, enemies over here? Nope. So let's remove this sword. And uh, it actually doesn't equip this to me immediately, so I'm going to have to grab this. But we built the storm mover. If I recall correctly, I think there's an... Isn't there like a shack around here where I can hide in? Doesn't seem like it for now. Um, I'm going to try... Yeah, I'm gonna quickly equip it like this. Storm ruler. There we go. Okay. So the storm ruler is a very cool weapon. So from now on, I can actually do this and use this weapon as a way of defeating mantle rays. So like this, and then slam, and I can kill mantle rays in one go. I'm gonna have to heal up in between. Should probably not use my strongest healing items, do I? Ah. That's not my strongest healing weapon. Fair enough. So there we go. That's two more down. We're actually uh, giving out a lot of souls. Boom! Yep. So now we're uh, working at equal grounds now. Where's the Storm King itself? It's over there. But I think as long as there are Manta Rays alive, he's going to try and kill me. Well, I can't really do anything. Ooh! Don't hit from the side. It was one that got a sneaky hit it. There we go. There that one goes. One more down the drain. I don't know why my character yells in pain every time she uses it. I don't know if it has an effect on my health or something. I'm trying to keep an eye out for which ones actually are going for me. I think that one might be hittable. No. Oh, but those are. There's at least one. Oh god. So yeah, there, there's a lot of... Okay. I think he was trying to hit me with a with a barrage there. Okay. Fair enough. There. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. The sound design, really. It's phenomenal. That's one down, and then the other one is going to miss me, but I'm not going to miss it. Oh, I've got the second one there as well, so I think that's most of them down. I think there's only one left, but the Storm King itself is uh, a bit angry at me, I think. So he's going to try and try and hit me with that, but now I can actually hit him. Is that a hit? No. That's the final mantle ray down there. And now this thing is gonna have to come lower for me to hit it apparently. Okay, there he comes. I'm gonna hide over here. I think I'm not getting hit over there. And now. Am I hitting it? I'm not hitting it. I think I need to go up again. So I'm high enough for it to uh, get hit. Oh god. That's probably not good. Let's hide over here. That should allow me to block every single one of these. And now I'm at a perfect position to hit him in the, hit him in the face. Hit him in the face. There we go. That's a hit. Since he's right above me, I can actually just keep spamming the attack. Okay, that wasn't that wasn't good, but okay, that was a double hit. The sword is taking a beating. So let's hide a little bit over here. Well, they are actually they are actually mini manta rays. That is funny. 
Yeah, I can't really hit him from here. So there we go. That, that's annoying. Yeah, but it doesn't hit that first time. There we go. I uh, don't know if I can get a final hit in. Probably not. No. Okay, it's leaving again. Seems like it's accelerating as well. Probably not the best of ideas. Oh! Wait, hey, what the hell is that? Oh, there's a new one. Great. So there's a, a normal one just respawned, which is really annoying. Um, can you... Okay, is that tail gonna hit me? No. There he goes. And then the final... Is he turning around? Yeah, it's gonna come in. And then we can finish this off. Only took me a few health items. This is not a hard boss fight, as long as you know what to do. You really need to storm with it. But uh, it's the only item that really matters. It really is really apparent what it's all about. So is it firing? Yeah, it is. There we go. Hitting me from all directions. And then you can just go underneath it. And one final hit. There we go. Oh no! I need another hit. There we go. There it goes. I thought it was gonna land on my head. <laughs> Storm King's trophy, there we go. Body restored and we get ourselves another Archdemon soul. Uh, right here, we touch this thing. There we go. Storm Demon soul and a pure cloudstone. So if you wanna upgrade some more weapons. But that's it. That's it for World 4. It's just as simple as that. Just whack a big stormy sword a few times in the air. And I think the effect of the storm ruler only works when you're in this specific level. Or in, in this specific world at least. So now we could technically go back and uh, have uh, bloody vengeance on those manta rays that killed us before. But uh, yeah, other than that there's just a bunch of items still here. So I'm just gonna look around a little bit and find the items that we missed. Ah, oh, wait, is this the house that I remember? Ah, yeah, you can actually get this destroyed if you get hit by a manta ray, I think. Because otherwise there's no real way to go into this house. And there's an item there, actually. Oh, wait, 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 wait. There we go, I'm talking rubbish again. Some more holy arrows, okay. That might actually give you the wrong idea if you get this item first. And like, okay, I need to use a bow and arrow to kill this thing, but no. Nope. You need the big sword at the end to kill the boss. Uh, I think this is the final item that I haven't checked out just yet. It's a bunch of new moon draws, which is always appreciated. More healing items. So that's it for World 4. I'm gonna read up the Archstone as a final bit of lore. So perhaps this demon, a flying beast resembling a gigantic stingray, is a manifestation of the thoughts and feelings of the Shadowman who worshipped it centuries ago. So there we go, the end of World 4. So let's head back to the Nexus with that. So that got us another bunch of, um, of souls, one of which I'm gonna actually put into magic. So let's just go over here to the Maiden in Black and say seek soul power and put magic up to 10. Next up we're gonna put vitality up two more points and then we're gonna put fate up one more point. So that's 50,000 souls down the drain. We still have quite a bit left, but I have some plans for that. But now that we have a magic stat of 10, I think this guy might be more uh, agreeable to talk with. Are you here to face the demons? If so, please free Sage Freight the Visionary from his cell in Latria. I will help you however I can. I can teach you elementary spells. Sage Freak is a gleaming hope for humankind, but I have not the power to save him alone. The exaggerated facial expressions in this game are just the best, but uh, let's talk to him further. Master Freak is a great man who has systemized the magic of the soul arts to make it possible for human imitation. By observing the state of Boletaria and the demons within it, he is likely to pave the way for greater things. All the more reason that I must meet Master Freak as soon as possible. So, there's one thing you can't really deny that the, the magic users, the sorcerers of this world are really 
sounding really evil, like like the the um, exaggerated experimenter guys that don't really mind that everybody's dying because of demons, because demons give them magic powers, so that's just all fine. Me? Of course I made my best effort to free Master Freak. But I had not the strength, it's as simple as that. Besides, if I myself were captured, who would stand here and recruit rescuers? That sounds like a lazy excuse. Besides, if I myself were captured. But yeah, that's everything he has to say. So now we can actually learn magic. Uh, we can throw soul arrows, we can pulse flames, we can enchant our weapon with magic. Um, we can generate a loud sound somewhere else, so yeah, that is interesting. We can also cloak ourselves, protect ourselves, uh, and do some uh, fire protection for ourselves as well, so a water veil. Um, so basic spells, I think we can actually buy most of these with the souls that we have right now, so might as well do that, right? So, soul echo, flame toss, um, familiar sprank, cloak, and water veil, and... Then I think protection might be more useful. Although I'm probably just going to buy everything from him. So with all our consumable souls uh, consumed, we have 26,000 souls. So that means I can buy another one of the spells. There we go. Be careful how you use it. So now we bought everything from this guy. It would not be granted to one such as yourself. I had to make an exception for the sake of Sage Freak. Which is really contradicting what he said He said before, that magic is now basically available for everybody, uh, for human imitation. Um, with that said, I like round numbers, so I'm gonna just uh, put one more point into fate to have our scaling go up there as well. And then I'm gonna have to see what we can do with our weapons, because our weapons, I think our weapons can actually use another upgrade. So by the way, we never checked out the description of the Storm Ruler, but the legendary large sword with a barbed blade named for one who quells or controls storms. It is said that the ancestral Shadowman rent the very storm clouds from the sky with its might. Abandoned for an age, the sword is badly deteriorated, but what remains of this once mighty weapon is still enough to send foes flying. If wielded in the forest of monoliths, resting place of ancestral spirits its power to run the sky might just be reawoken so there we go confirming that this weapon can only be properly used in that area so the final area of the boss so uh yeah it's uh, a really cool weapon but not something that we'll be continuously using Another thing that we found in the previous episode actually was the Ronin Ring. So again, shaped with straw rope, this ring slows wear endured by weapons. One of several rings originating in a distant land known for its unique short sword crafting technique. And yeah, we, we read that already, so that is interesting. Um, the other thing that we found was the Hiltless weapon. So there we go, the Hiltless. This Uchigatana is named for its lack of a hilt. The blade appears somehow wet. A fine piece of work with an intricate design forged by a famous black uh, swordsmith in a distant land. Extremely difficult to handle owing to the fact that it must be held by the blade, inevitably injuring the wielder. So this is a weapon that actually damages you for every strike that you take, but in return you do get a very powerful uh, weapon that scales incredibly with dexterity. So um, not something that we'll be using, but it is a powerful weapon nonetheless. So the meat cleaver is nice and all, but I kind of went back to blacksmith Ed, and he actually has another upgrade path that I now want to use in the future. But for that, I need more faint stone shards. Um, but blessed is something that we're going to go into. So blessed basically means that the uh, weapon gains a magic component, so basically like the meat cleaver that we're already using, and also gains fate scaling. Again, as the meat cleaver that we're already using. The halberd is a bit more flexible in its uh, movesets uh, though, so if we can, I might upgrade to this uh, later on, but right now that is not an option. So the Storm Demon Soul actually gives us another miracle, the Anti-Magic Field, so derived from the soul of the Storm King Demon, one of the greatest of all miracles, it symbolizes the power of gold in opposition, blah blah blah, we've seen that already, but it creates a field around the caster which nullifies magic, which is really cool, because this blocks your opponent from actually using magic which might come in handy later on so we're gonna definitely be buying this uh, and since i know what the weapon is that you can get with the hero demon soul i don't really mind uh, actually buying the second chance 
uh, miracle here as well. So there we go. We can buy all of that. We can also use our remaining souls to buy the hidden soul miracle, getting us ever closer to that trophy of getting all the miracles and yeah, God lowering our soul warrior. count a little bit. And as always, we're going to be using Patches as our final soul dumper, because uh, he actually, I mean, he is the best merchant basically in the game, which is uh, ironic since most people will want to be able to kill him after you, uh, yeah, after he maybe even traps you twice, because that bear bug wasn't really a trap for us, but uh, it definitely could kill you if you're not careful. Um, he still sells those heavy arrows, but I'm wondering if I want to be... I'm going to be trying to stockpile on fire arrows regardless, so I think I'm just going to buy a bunch of half moon grasses. 13 is fine, fills us up a little bit. And then I'm going to nip back really quickly into world 4, just to kill another reaper and buy a bunch of fire arrows with the souls that we're going to be getting from that guy. Uh, before we do that, I'm going to make some space. So. Just really quickly, nip over here, go past Blige, who is now very happy to see us. Then we can go over here and, as we've done a few times, kill the Reaper. And as you can see, we're actually doing more damage now because of the fact that we've upgraded our stats a little bit. And we, get, we still get over 4,000 souls. And with that, I'm going to buy a bunch of fire arrows. So, arrows, fire arrows. There we go, how much I can get from you? 91. Is that soul? Yeah, limited by soul. So that is really good. We got a bunch of fire arrows now and it's gonna help us in the next sure episode. There was one thing that I actually just checked out uh, online, I can, I can just admit that, is uh, what the world tendency events are in this level. And there's actually one that I noticed in the previous episode, but uh, now we actually have an answer for this. So there was an item down below the hole that Patches kicked us down, but we can access that through here again, and I would hope there are no enemies here anymore. But there could be another Black Phantom, but I don't think that thing responds. No, it doesn't. But now the corpse that was trying to crawl out, suddenly, it's just down on the floor. So it's right over here, and if we grab this, we get the Magic Sword Makoto. So Magic Sword Makoto, a cursed katana that has appeared in folklore through the ages, named for Makoto the giant who lived in a distant land. Countless unique teeth have been carved into its blade. These teeth ravage the flesh, never to heal again. Cursed weapons, like the Makoto, are said to devour the wielder's essence and rob their warmth. Innumerable warriors continue to be taken by the Makoto's allure nevertheless. So a very very cool uh, weapon that does an insane amount of base damage uh, but has no scaling so usually not that used but this uh, weapon is actually used in a quest as well and the quest for this actually happens to be at the very same place that we started this level so uh, island's edge i'm gonna lure the skeleton down here so we can kill it as you can see there's a person standing right next to the skeleton for some reason the skeleton doesn't seem to uh, care about that and i'm just gonna kill him with our meat cleavers there we go love that finishing animation but uh, this is the guy that is actually looking for the sword that we just picked up you seem to have your head about you come here i have a proposal for you do not be afraid, you have much to gain. So this is a uh, Asian Geralt, Geralt of, uh, uh, I, I don't know, China. Um, and I am Satsuki. this guy is Satsuki. I seek a keepsake of my father. Have you seen the sword inscribed, Makoto? I will offer you demon souls if you can help me find it. So... But the problem with this, I just checked out the quest. I think this guy is always lying. So you don't want to give him the sword, because we have the sword now. So, yeah, he, he always attacks you if you either give the sword or don't give the sword. He will just attack you nonetheless, so. Ah, you have found the Makoto, have you? Bless your good fortune and, well, good work. Now. Just hand Makoto over to me. 
Now, it's not like he's asking me nicely, is it? But uh, Magic Sword Makoto, will we give that to him? No, because I know if I give it to him, he's going to attack me regardless, so I don't want to give him a better weapon to attack me with, so no. What on earth is wrong with you? How dare you waste my precious time? Do you not want demon sword? So this guy is talking about precious time and basically the end of the world. I think everybody has plenty of time. Fine. You've made your choice. I did. Now, I make mine. So uh, let's roll out of the way because this guy's gonna... Ooh, oh, and the camera was really zoomed in, by the way. Um, boom! Yeah, this guy doesn't stand a chance. The meat cleaver is just immensely powerful. There we go. I can actually wax him on his ass. He's gonna try and heal again. He actually attacks really fast. And I don't. I I, I mean I have a like a big meat cleaver. No, you won't. You dick. I can actually just kill him in one combo probably, but it's just funny to see him try and get to me. I have superior range and weapon damage, so sorry, Sats, okay? You never really stood a chance. We got a bit of souls from that, but the biggest problem with this is that this was actually a World Tendency event. So our World Tendency was plus three, but if we now go and check in the menu, as you... Oh, right now it is still... Plus, wait, what? It's supposed to go down to minus three. That is weird. Maybe it... It updates when I use the the arch stone? I don't know. So I can warp to the same level. I don't know if that actually changes anything. So right now, I think, yeah, that shows us that it's back to... Yeah, it's back to neutral now because we did minus three. Uh, we can't really get back to black world tendency yet. Uh, but, oh yeah, forgot about the skeleton man. Goodbye, skeleton man. Uh, but yeah, right now we're back to uh, the uh, the neutral stage of the world tendency, which is n not that bad, I suppose. Because um, we did all the white world tendency events in this world. I don't actually know if that actually has an impact on your character tendency, because I feel like it's a bit darker than it is supposed to be. If you compare it to the icon underneath the Archer of the Tower Queen and the Shadowman, it feels slightly darker. Which is interesting, because of course I technically now killed an NPC, even though he attacked me first. Yeah, guess we'll have to see later on if that affects us. But uh, with that I'm going to take a little break, because that's enough for one episode. We basically finished up World 4 completely. There are some uh, Black World Tendency events, but that's just basically adding more Black Phantoms. They have a few items as well, but most of them I actually already have, so that's not a problem at all. So thank you guys, and don't for watching. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like it right below in the comment section. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, I hope to see you in the next episode of Demon Souls. Thank you for watching. Goodbye and stay nutty.